Duke basketball's trip to the nation's capital was much shorter than we had hoped for. That was not fun last night. NC State tops Duke, we discuss on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. So great to have you here with us on Friday, March 15th, 2024. Excited to talk about everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. Before we get started here today on March 15th, I do want to make sure I take an opportunity to wish a very happy birthday to my mom. Would not be in this position had she not brought me into the world all those years ago. And so happy birthday, mom. Thanks for listening each and every day to Locked On Blue Devils. Don't have other positive things to talk about the rest of the show, however, as Duke basketball suffers a loss last night to NC State. Tough one for the Blue Devils in the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament. We'll discuss that with our pal Ryan Lohman at the Duke Nation on Twitter. We'll also talk about what's next for Duke as they await Selection Sunday. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Locked On Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Also, make sure that you watch our show each and every day on YouTube. Your support means so much to us. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Watch the show. Like this video. Share it with your friends. Really do appreciate all of that. So without further ado, let's bring them on in. My good friend, Ryan Lohman, back with us once again. Uh, it's a good time of year. We love March basketball. We just like it a whole lot more, man, when we get to watch Duke wins. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to March, that's for sure. And it stunk because I felt like this team was was kind of coming into their own uh, leading up to that UNC game, obviously going to NC State and winning there. Obviously, NC State isn't a great team, um, but beating them at NC State isn't something that we as Duke fans get to see very often. So uh, that was a lot of fun, and it set up a great time, a great uh, senior night for Roach and uh and Ryan Young and Hubbard but uh I don't these big games at Cameron man Duke, UNC kind of has Duke's number at Cameron these last few times and it's it's weird I don't like it um and then I was like all right well we'll put that one behind us it's just a bad I, I kind of chalked up to a bad matchup right like they run fast they're they're a deep team um and uh I just I, I'm kind of like the the uh, hopeless optimist when it comes to this team and uh it, hey. He came into the ACC tournament, man, thinking, "Hey, I'm going to go to the Wild. Went to the Minnesota Wild game. I don't need to watch this. It's NC State, neutral site. Like, what, what could go wrong?" And like, literally everything did. No bench scoring, just ugly game all around. Um, Flip had a really good game, but otherwise, for the most part, it was it wasn't great. And we're talking about a Jeremy Roach guy who this could be his last season. Obviously, he has eligibility to come back, and that's a whole different topic. But um, who's not playing well to end the season. He had a really, really good season, one that I was actually surprised by. Um, and to end the season three out of his last four games, he has just not been playing as well um, as he was before. And if this team has any hope, any chance of making any run starting next week, uh, it starts with him and uh, starts and ends with him really at that point. So, Yeah, Duke is now 2-2 two and two in the month of March. A good start with that Saturday game against UVA, and then they go to Raleigh and knock off the Wolfpack but have now dropped two straight. Hopefully we don't see many more losses, no more losses in March for the Duke basketball team, and they can kind of put together a big run towards the Final Four and potentially a national championship for this team. But we're talking about last night's game in particular, Ryan, and and for the Duke basketball team, uh, I think that just right out of the gates in this one, uh, not the best of starts per usual. I mean, it took three minutes for either team to really score. Yeah. Um, Duke didn't find themselves in a nine nothing hole like they had the first time they played NC State and ultimately got the win. But uh, yeah, just another slow shooting start uh, for this team. Yeah, first points came on free throws, right? <laughs> so it, it and I didn't really understand like the, the game plan. Uh, there didn't really seem to be one. Mark Mitchell was taking a lot of shots. He had the ball in his hand a lot and. 
I like Mark as a player, right? Like I think him being aggressive, getting downhill is good for this team. But when it comes to starting games and, and running an offense and setting up the offense, Proctor and, and Roach should be the ones uh, manipulating the offense in that capacity. It just seemed like March, Mark was taking the ball and doing whatever he wanted with it. And that was trying to get to the rim, getting stuff, got fouled a couple of times. He obviously is a great free throw shooter, and that showed multiple times last night. Uh, and then Costa, uh, coughed up the ball a few times and, and had a couple of turnovers. So just a really weird start. Came out super flat. Um, not one that like says there's signs, but when McCain gets popped by Jalen Blakes in pregame and he comes out and shoots the way he did, like did that make a difference in how McCain played? Because he obviously didn't shoot the ball well, um, especially to start. So just a really weird vibe around the team coming out. Don't know what it is, man. It seems like we've been seeing this way too often with this team. And when you have the four guys that came back, four or five guys that came back from last season who contributed – and we just it just it just feels off this year, man. It, and especially in games where you're excited for and like, all right, this is gonna be the one where they're gonna step up and do it uh, against a, against good teams or against uh, when stuff's on the line. They just haven't, and it's been it's been super disappointing. And like you said, the start was the biggest thing. Big scoring days for Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell, but Duke can't pick up the win from that. We'll get into some of those individual numbers as we get to the second segment of today's show, but I, I think you look at other things with the Duke basketball team in particular. Effort is something that sometimes is brought up in losses like this. There were a few opportunities to grab loose balls on the floor, and NC State just won the race to them. Yeah, it's a common theme. Even Shire's talked about it, and I don't – I'm starting to think that, like, Shire and staff are doing what they are able to do and doing the best they can to get this team to to, to win those 50-50 battles, to die for loose balls, to come out with a, with some sort of fire. I think he's saying the politically correct stuff in the post games, but – he he's a smart guy. He's smarter than us when it comes to basketball. He knows his team better than we do. He's obviously trying stuff behind the scenes and maybe this team just doesn't have it. Maybe the chemistry is not there. Maybe they don't have the leadership they want. Maybe the returning guys don't get along as well with the, with the incoming guys. I don't know what it is, but I think at this point it's up to the players. And I know Roach had said last night, they're going to have a players only meeting when they got back to Durham. People want to talk about it being too late for that. It's never too late for that. What do we have to lose now? Right? Like either they hate each other and stuff isn't going well and we lose in the first weekend, or this is what turns it around at the right time. And these guys all come together for a common goal uh, starting next week. So I'm fine with it. I love it. It's, it gave me a little bit of more hope than it probably should because it's like, all right, sweet. Like maybe this will do it. And if it doesn't, well, then it doesn't. It hasn't worked all season, so why not try it? You know. Yeah, and the season's over at that point. So yeah, it's exactly. better better good than than not happening at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the the what if scenarios you could play in that sort of thing should that not take place. Uh, not something we want to entertain there. So let's take our first time out here on today's show, and then when we come back, uh, let's take a look at some of those individual numbers, other team stats. Uh, that stood out and a whole lot more. Really, really excited to have today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils with Ryan Lohman, and we'll continue here in just a moment. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by Robin Hood. That's right, Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. Now we've got some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. Lockdown Blue Devils here today, also brought to you by our friends at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights, in-depth analysis, and so much more. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug in to any existing TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. 
Fire TV channels that let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Once again, visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right, let's move forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson joined today by my buddy Ryan Lohman at the Duke Nation on Twitter. We're talking about the Duke and NC State game in the quarterfinals last night, 74 69. The final score as NC State defeats Duke. What were some of the numbers that really stood out to you, Ryan? <laughs> I think it's pretty glaring when you look at the the Duke side is the the donuts by the bench. I mean, Blake's obviously didn't play, but uh, from TJ Power, Sean Stewart, and Ryan Young, and and the minutes next to those, like the bench played what is that a total of eighteen minutes last night? <laughs> like that's crazy, especially for a team that is out Caleb Foster already. Um, it's I'm not I don't know if it would have made a difference. Uh, Power didn't shoot the ball well, obviously. Um, but just a weird night to not play the bench any more than they did, um, especially with McCain and, and Flip and, and the foul trouble that they were. It's just, uh, yeah, we couldn't get anything going. We needed a spark. Blake's is a guy you bring in to get a spark, especially with Foster out. I, I would have expected to see a little bit more of him. Not that he puts us over the top as far as uh, scoring efficiency goes, but in the defensive end and, and somebody who can bring in energy, that's a great uh, guy to go to there. Yeah. Um, the other thing, Flip scored 28 points, man, like on 13 to 20 shooting. What a night for him. Obviously, like I said at the beginning, probably the only positive to come out of tonight is Flip's performance. But um, when you're relying on him to score that much, uh, you're probably going to be in a little bit of trouble, especially with um, Roach only shooting the ball six times, only making one of them. Uh, Proctor going four of 16 is an insane stat line to me. That can't happen. I don't think Proctor should be shooting anywhere near that number on a night to night basis. Um, if they have any chance of making a run. So th those are the things, the bench and then the guard play is just what killed Duke. And when you have three guards in your starting lineup and um, they shoot as poorly as they did last night, you're not going to win many games um, against any competition really. Yeah, that is done. I mean, that's seven of 28 combined for the three guards and uh, McCain, Roach, and Proctor. And this is big nights offensively from Filipowski, 28 points and 14 rebounds. And then Mark Mitchell as well had 18 points on the night for Duke. Mitchell went 0 of 4 from the free throw line. Duke 8 of 14 as a team from the charity stripe. Those six misses, the difference in a basketball game. You can look at things like that as uh, this Duke team, when it's Mitchell and Filipowski on the free throw line as of late, that's really hurt them as well. And come tournament time, kind of the, the very smallest things in the game of basketball can sometimes hurt you. Not that that would make up the difference in last night's game, but just something to kind of be mindful of in these uh, NCAA tournament games that come up. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the NC State side, how balanced they are is in the scoring side. No one was over 20. Everyone scored besides uh, Pass, who only played a minute, so it doesn't even count. Everybody who basically touched the floor in meaningful minutes scored the basketball last night for NC State. Just a very balanced uh, all-around night for them. Obviously, even with, with shooting the field goals, their most was 13. Everybody else had 11, 9, 7. Like, it's not – there wasn't anything that just stood out and not one person was killing us. It was just a full-on team effort. You look at the Duke side, and, and you look at that box where you'd probably be surprised that we lost by only five points. Like, you would probably thought it was more of a blowout by the way the scoring – uh, balanced out for both teams. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen this week with, I know we're going to talk about it in the next segment, but it's the game plan and how this team is going to be utilized going into the tournament is going to have to change from what it was with this one, because what they went into this game with, as far as the game plan goes, just it either went out the door in the first five minutes when we couldn't score a bucket, or uh, it was just, let's go out and we're going to beat them and move on to the next game. And, and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the staff comes up with. Feels like they can never pick the right formula, which is tough in games like this, right? Because a lot of people want to make note of, hey, in the North Carolina games this season, RJ Davis has not been a big factor at all. But in both games, other people have really stepped up and beat Duke. Duke beats NC State 11 days ago in Raleigh, a game in which DJ Burns had one of his best games of the entire season, 27 points. Last night, Burns gets the ball in the post a good bit, really was not in foul trouble, and Duke was pretty aggressive in doubling him up, letting him give out to other shooters, and then 
it was a team effort that kind of beat Duke. So they were more aggressive towards DJ Burns and other guys were able to step up uh, as opposed to kind of letting him get his uh, as he did in the first matchup. It's been a common theme this year, right? It seems like we, if we're going to win games and the other play, the other team has a, a key player, like you bring up Burns, you bring up uh, in games where UNC was at their worst, not worst, but they lost. Uh, I forget who it was. Georgia Tech when Davis went yep. off. If you let these, if you let these guys get theirs and just focus on shutting down everybody else, it normally works out for you. We're not in the NBA; they're not going to go out there and score seventy. But if you if you let up twenty five to thirty points against a stud, but do your job on everybody else, it's normally going to. To uh, give a result in your favor, uh, it, let me look at Philip uh, Philipowski last night. Went for twenty eight, right? Um, and they they locked on everybody else, and NC State got the win. So I think if you can just let the good player, or not even two, but let the good player get theirs and focus on everybody else, and, and make it a, a night of hell for everybody else, you're going to be in a good spot. And there's going to be these teams, especially the first game and second game of the tournament, that are going to have these one or these one guys that can carry a team and that have carried them all season, especially at the mid major level. That you just let them have theirs, let them go off for for 20, 30 points, and just focus on everybody else. And um, I know with our draw that we're going to get, uh, there's going to be some teams that have those guys. So if that game plan uh, goes is what we've talked about, just lock down everybody else, let the one guy get his, and and the rest should take care of itself. Yeah, that's not what happened last night, unfortunately for the Duke basketball team. But Kyle Filipowski with a lot of shots at the rim uh, and was effective there. Only one three point attempt. Duke's best offense the entire night was getting up the floor, giving Filipowski the ball in the post and letting him go to work. But in a lot of ways, that's not what Duke has been doing all season long. It worked, but Duke's been the best three-point shooting team in the entire conference the whole season. Last night, 5 of 20 from three-point range, just not making those shots from the outside. Even And Mark Mitchell went two for two. I mean, he's <laughs> two of the five makes that Duke had, and none of us thought that would be possible. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, right, is the, these guards have shown to be able to knock down shots. And if if these three guards can shoot like they have uh, in conference play in the tournament, we have a chance to make it to the second weekend. I really do like believe that you just you can't have these nights. I'm fine with Flip getting his in the paint. I've been calling for it all year. He should be down there more often. He shoots far too many three pointers and this uh, team needs him to do. Uh, and, and that works well when he's in the post and we're out, have our guards sitting outside shooting threes. Um or having pick or having, uh, excuse me, having flip set picks um, at the top of the key for them. And that's what's getting these guys open or running sets for McCain. And so when they're not knocking down shots and um, flips only getting his in the, in the paint, it's tough, but when they are knocking down shots and flip is also doing his thing in the paint, this team is hard to beat. And so we always say guard play wins in March. And so if, if we want, if this team is going to do anything in March, it's going to be because McCain Roach and Proctor figured it out playing together and also shooting the ball much better than they have recently. It's been so long. I was just looking through the game logs of the last month or so, and, and NC State makes seven from three point range for Duke. You got to go back all the way to the start of February to find a game in which Duke made less three pointers than their opponent. The last time it happened was a win over Notre Dame. But given oh, wow. the shooting prowess of this Duke basketball team, like three is greater than two, we're aware of this, but it just opens up so much more for this basketball team. And they want to thrive on making those outside shots. And for whatever reason, they just weren't falling. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it was, it was all about looks and whatnot. And, and McCain had his eye thing two of six for, for McCain isn't like unusual for him. He's had a couple of those nights before, but um, yeah, the, I think there, he also had four fouls, which is, is weird for him. So maybe that got into his head as well. Could have been playing with a headache too. You never know, man, like that. Yeah. Pop in the head like that. And it, a, a lot of stuff can happen. So um, I don't, and the other thing is, I don't think we're going to get Foster back. I think I would, if I was a betting man, I'd say Foster's done for the season, barring any sort of crazy run. Um, so I don't think we're going to have that uh, ability to go four deep at the guard position unless we're bringing in Blake. So let's take one more time out here today. And then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about what's next for the Stuke basketball team. And we'll have that conversation with Ryan Lohman in just a moment here on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked on Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. We love our friends at Nissan, especially this time of year, as March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. 
just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level, much like the Houston Cougars can only be described as the Nissan Armada. The top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder why they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, like the Houston Cougars, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Final few moments here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson joined today by my pal Ryan Lohman at the Duke Nation. Promote some of the work you got going on, man. You're all over the place. You got a lot going on. Yeah, uh, mainly just on Twitter at the Duke Nation. We do uh, we host a show at Crazy Cast on Twitter. We do that. We'll be having a bunch of episodes coming out. Uh, we do live post game reactions, and then um, we'll do a Selection Sunday show. We were hoping to have more shows this weekend, but obviously it didn't work out that way. But we'll do a Selection Sunday show, um, and then we'll do a preview. I think at some point during next week, and obviously any after any game during March Madness, we'll be going live as well. So make sure to check that out. Now we wait for Selection Sunday. Tonight is the semifinals of the ACC tournament. Virginia went on to beat uh, Boston College in overtime, a really exciting game. Uh, so Duke would have been playing Virginia with an opportunity to play the winner of either Pitt or North Carolina, uh, but that does not happen. So Duke waits. They can't do anything themselves personally to affect their seeding line. They're right there, a three seed, a four seed, the two most common outcomes for the Duke basketball team in a lot of ways, Ryan, I don't know that the difference means that much in a whole lot of where you're going to be sent and that sort of thing, other than if you start to play the one seed game as to who you would match up with and that sort of thing if you were in that four seed line. Yeah, at this point, at this point, the playing the one seed thing is like the least of my worries. Like, let's just get there. And then, like, if we lose to a UConn or a Purdue, it's like, so be it. Like, at that point, I'm not as concerned. Um the, the, the difference between uh, playing against the 13 seed and the 14 seed, though, I do think is is something to keep an eye on. Like these mid majors that are up there, like uh, uh, the, the 13 seeds of this time are like the 12 seeds of 10 years ago, I feel like. And not that not in the aspect of like they're going to beat like it's not going to turn into the uh, the popular upset. But these mid majors, man, they're getting really good. They're getting much better than they used to be. It's not crazy anymore to see these teams either win or put up a great fight. And uh, this year, it's, it's no different, right? So we have a lot of teams that I just don't want to see us play. Uh, McNeese State, led by Will Wade, is a team I don't want to run into. Uh, Samford's a good team. Vermont, Irvine, these are all teams that I have played really good basketball all year with. Really well-balanced teams, too. They don't have, like, these stud guys that are going to go out and get there. So teams that can hurt you in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, I, I, at this point – I just want to get a good – I want to be in a good region where we're playing this first weekend on the East Coast. Maybe I think Charlotte's one of the locations. And so put us in Charlotte and let's play. Uh, but I don't care who we see on that line. It's going to probably scare me a little bit being a three or four just because it can happen. Last year, one seed lost to 16, uh, 15 seed beat a two seed. Like it's – is there going to be more of that? And I just don't want that to be on Duke's shoulders this year as well. And it's unfortunate because these uh, – like I said, these mid-majors, man, are – are really good and they're only going to get better as uh, the years go on. And then people curious, like, are you going to be in a position where your region, your seed, your site location is a Thursday, Saturday setup or a Friday, Sunday setup, as we well know in the NCAA tournament with those first and second round games, Duke's going to be off for a whole week at that point, whether it be Thursday or Friday, I, I think they got to be itching to get back out there on the floor. I don't know that 24 hours uh, is going to make that big of a difference, whether it be Thursday or Friday. But uh, man, we need Duke basketball back, man. We want we were supposed to have more games to be watching with this team, so let's get them quicker. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't mind, and I'm I'm probably the the minority with this. I wouldn't mind the first game. Give me Thursday morning. Get it out of the way. What win or lose, I'm going to enjoy the March. I'm a huge March Madness fan. I'm going to enjoy it regardless. I'm going to watch regardless. And either if they're going to play like Friday night at the 6 p.m. primetime game, which they do a lot, it's either Thursday or Friday night. They always play. Like, I hate that. I hate waiting around all day to watch them play. I just want to watch Duke basketball. Win or lose, let's be done with it and move on so I can enjoy the rest of the tournament because, uh, yeah, it sucks that we're going to go this long without Duke basketball again. 
Well, we know that we're going to be following along. We know that uh, you're going to have great content up on your uh, social media platforms. Once again, in the crazy cast is something that we need to be on the lookout for. Any final thoughts, Ryan, that you've got for Duke basketball fans? I know it's kind of an uneasy time right now. Uh, people feel like the sky is falling following a loss like this, and we're questioning John Shire and, and just everything. Any final thoughts that you've got for Duke basketball fans? Yeah, I put out a, a pretty long thread this morning about it, and it, it came. people might have thought it came across as the sky is falling th uh, thread, but I basically put out that the next 14 months of, of Duke basketball is as important of, of a 14-month stretch than you'll see in the last – 15, 20 years of this program, just with uh, the new coach, with a huge uh, recruiting class coming in next year with high expectations. If this if this doesn't go well next weekend and we're bounced uh, before the second weekend, uh, there's some questions that I think are going to have to be answered and some uh, expectations next year and the pressure is going to heat up a little bit. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying I want Shire gone or anything, but if, if you bring in this bring back this uh, group of guys that you did and don't make it out of the first weekend and back to back years. And then you bring in Cooper flag with all the guys they're bringing in. Um, I think that pressure on Shire and staff is, is going to be very, very high going into next season. So um, check out that thread. It's just hypotheticals and, and pointing out facts and otherwise uh, let's, let's make a run. Let's put all let's that to bed, it. make a run. Let's, let's do, do that. it. Ryan, it's good to see you as always. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, JJ. You as well. All right. That's Ryan Lohman at the Duke Nation joining us on this Friday edition of Lockdown Blue Devils. I hate that we're not talking about an ACC semifinals matchup, but we'll wait. Selection Sunday will be here soon. NCAA tournament basketball coming your way next week. That's going to do it for our show here today. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you on Monday. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.